In this video, we're going to create the wheels that go along the side of the train. Um, there's two different types of wheels, one large spoked one, and then there's a smaller one that goes in the front. Um, before we do that, as I mentioned in the end of the uh, last uh, video, the cabin had to have some more detail. So all I did was um, make a simple window frame with extrusion. I made a little rim around it, move some of these rivets, made this little ledge and some uh, support brackets and a couple little plaques. And these little planes, like they're like an extra sheet of metal that would be put on. And just add some nice surface details. So that's all I did. Um, we have a railing, which is a uh, spline that I did, you know, a rectangle and did some uh, fillet. Made a little chair. Nothing, nothing complicated. I'm certain you can handle that on your own. So let's get started with the wheels. Let's go to the layer manager. And uh, we don't have a wheels layer. I don't think in the beginning I had one made. So we're going to create a new layer. Let's call it wheels. Let's make it active, has the check mark. Let's unhide the blueprints and unfreeze the blueprints. Back down the wheels. Okay, I'm gonna select the blueprint. I'm gonna um, hide unselected. So we're gonna come over here, hide unselected, go to left viewport, and let's zoom in a little bit. So uh, when I originally did this, I did a run through to make sure that I have everything down to show you. I made these as separate pieces, so I had the spoked part, and then this, like, it's, I think it's like a weight, and it has like a spindle sometimes that the, these parts of the train attach to. What I'm going to do this time is make it as one piece, and that really lends itself to a, a good poly modeling exercise. And also, it, it just looks better, like I, I found reference of um, straight spokes like this on the Santa Fe, but I found ones that had like a teardrop shape, which you'll see as we model. It just looks more aesthetically pleasing, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to go to Create. Um, we're going to go to primitives, MVH primitives, tube cap, and right here, I'm just going to go to the center of the wheel. You can pick any one if you want, doesn't matter, they're all the same. I'm just going to click and drag it out, F3. That's about the right size. And rather than just do a small inset, I'm going to go all the way in so it's closed off. And we're going to go with 32 segments. And subdivisions, let's go with 6. We want them evenly spaced, and that looks good. And let's right click this tube cap in the stack and make it into edible poly. Okay, there we go. Alt and X so we can see through it and F4 for the wireframe. And from what I've seen, um, like the halfway point, the top half here will be like this, this whole moon shape. But it actually comes straight across. So that's what we're going to do. And what we're going to do is we're going to skip some of these centers. We need like a hub in the center of the wheel. And we're going to start here and come out to there. And we're just going to do this every other line. Um, there's a selection tools like you know modify selection. You can try to do it by uh, face area and things like that to have similar selection. I think because the, these change in size, it may not work as expected. So I would recommend taking what 10 seconds to uh, just do this this way. Um, and you see, like it's not even to get to the other half. It's not a big deal. I'm going to delete these just like that. Okay, and then I'm going to go to perspective and I'm going to just move this wheel out a little bit just like that. Alt and X so I can see what we have. There we go. And let's go uh, T three times on the keyboard, keyboard for turbo smooth. F4 so you can see a little better. Let's make it two iterations. And that's kind of like what we're, what we're looking for as far as the shape. But now these half moons, they stick off the wheel considerably. So what we're going to do now is come back down and we're going to select some polygons. Let's do it with uh, select. Let's use the spray can. I like that. And just start to paint. I want that center hub. And then we want all of these. I'm using control if I let go to, to continue my selection, just like this. There we go. All the way around, just like that. Now we have everything we want selected, selected. And what we're going to do now is extrude those. And we don't want to do it all in one swoop. Let's right click that out. Let's do one small one, uh, plus sign for another. Let's go out further, just like that. And maybe we'll do one more small one. Back that down, just like that. Check mark. And once again, go to Turbo Smooth and turn it on. And there you see what we have. It's more like what I saw in the reference. Um, but this detail here, I mean, it's it's being done by the polygon subdividing, but it's a nice detail. Um, 
and it looks accurate. I did see trains with wheels that have these shapes, so it's much more interesting than these straight spokes. And what we're going to do next is uh, go down to border, F4, so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to hit Control and A, and that selects all borders. And then I'm just going to shift and drag that once, and shift and drag it a second time, just like that. Okay. And then the last thing we'll do is uh, get an edge selection. So I hit 2 to go down to the edge sub-object level. Alt and R to ring select. Let's use, uh, for a change of pace, we'll use swift loop. And I'm just going to, just like in Maya, same thing. You would just find a spot, click, and it adds a loop. And do it here as well. Okay. Turbo smooth it one more time. And that tightened it up a bit. Looks good. Okay. So with that, we're going to make a little piece that encompasses the wheel. And I know you're saying the back side's open, but um, we could mirror it if we wanted to. Um, it's not a big deal. I don't know if I want that poly count. Um, so for now, I'm going to leave it like this. But you could simply just do a symmetry modifier with the center and then just scale things accordingly so that they're not sticking out too much. So Shift and B I'm going to do um, just to get the back viewport. That's my shortcut. And then I'm going to come in here. I'm going to use the line tools, <clears throat> shapes, line. And uh, from what I've seen, these uh, the part that meets the track, it seems like it sits around this wheel. doesn't seem like uh, it's one piece in a lot of the, the reference I found. It seemed like it was two. I'm going to do this and come down here just to there and right click out of that. And now if we want, we can uh, grab these verts. Some of them are going to be in areas where we want them to catch a little glint or highlight. So I'm going to do a fillet as we've done earlier. And there's not that much. It's too much. So I'm going to type it in. I'm going to type in um, point, let's say three for now. That looks good to me. That's perfect. And we're going to lay this line. First, we're going to line it up with that wheel. Pull it back there. Zoom in, and you can see that line right here is probably the center mark of the wheel. I'm going to line up with that. I'm going to grab with control. I'm going to select the wheel and keep the line selected. I'm going to Alt and Q to isolate. There we go. And now we're going to do a, uh, a pivot line. So we're going to select the line and the wheel. Let's, let's get the wheel first. Let's go here to hierarchy, hierarchy, and we're going to affect pivot only, center to object, just like that. And now we can control and click on that spline, and let's use the align tool, turn on affect pivot only, and let's click on that pivot in the center. X, Y, and Z position, okay. Turn off affect pivot only. Let's come here, and now let's add a lathe modifier to the stack. It's uh, not going in the right direction, so we'll just hit X. And we'll hit, uh, let's say, uh, 46. Maybe a little more than that. Let's go 52. You can adjust this as much as you like. Just keep in mind the poly count. I'm going 62 there. Um, it's a bit much, but it looks good. It's going to catch nice highlights. So that encompasses the wheel, and that's the part that rides on the track. Um, uh, let's call that wheel tracker. I know you like these technical names, dash 01. And let's call this large wheel 01. Large underscore wheel dash 01. Okay, and, and now um, do a little more work on the wheel part. So let's click on it. Come down the stack to the polygons. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to grab this center vertice. I'm going to chamfer it. And we're going to do it open. So I'm going to ch check open, and I'm going to make it bigger. And this is where like there'll be like an axle or something comes through. Check for OK. Border select it. Let's chamfer that border and make it a closed chamfer and reduce that value. It's a little too big. There we go. One. That looked like it was still open. A little technical problem there. There we go. That's right. That's closed. Okay. And now we're going to grab that border one more time. 
and I'm going to shift and drag it back with the move tool a couple times and this way when we divide it'll be a nice little yeah that looks good now you can have a a piece on the surface that that kind of comes out or we can just simply uh grab some polygons or edges let's do a edge selection alt and r for ring convert to polygon convert to face in the quad menu by right clicking let's just extrude that a little bit uh even less than that a little bit more right there let's do edge edge selection alt and l loop select that let's just pull this back just like that let's see how this looks yeah that looks nice so now that's where the axle will come through the center of the wheel and um, I think that's pretty good you can see here that this isn't perfectly aligned I'm gonna give a little nudge and if I have to I'll scale it that looks good now it's encompassing the wheel okay so that wheel is done and what we're gonna do is uh, we're just, just simply gonna clone it so I want to pause the video and using the blueprints you want to clone this to the other locations where the large wheels are so when I return with the next video these wheels will be in place and we'll pick it up from there and make a smaller wheel at the front of the train so I'm going to pause the video.